What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at no more parties. And in today's video, I want to save you from wasting your first round pick in a dynasty startup on Christian McCaffrey. That's all the introduction I have. So let's get into it. <laughs> Per Dynasty League Football, Christian McCaffrey is currently being drafted as the 12th player overall in the RB5 in single QB Dynasty startups. In the last five years, the RB5 in PPR has finished with an average point total of 285.7 fantasy points. Christian McCaffrey turns 26 on June 7th. He'll be 26 this entire season. So I was wondering how often do running backs who are 26 or older post top five seasons? So I looked into it. And it's only happened once in each of the last three years. In 2021, Austin Eckler did it. In 2020, Derrick Henry did it. And in 2019, Derrick Henry did it for the first time. Before those three times, it hadn't happened a single time since 2016. And since 2012, so the last 10 years in the NFL, it's happened an average of 1.3 times per season. So essentially, it only happens once per year, if that. Although... I do think the running back pool skews a little bit older right now, so I think it's it's decently likely that a running back who's 26 years or older posts a top five season in 2022. Austin Eckler, Joe Mixon, James Conner, Leonard Fournette, Zeke Elliott, Alvin Kamara, uh, Nick Chubb, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, Rashad Penny, Aaron Jones, Christian McCaffrey. Those guys are all high upside running backs who are at least 26 going into this next season. But for any individual running back over the age of 25, the odds are not good that they're going to post a top five season. I think overall this year, if I was betting if a guy 26 or older was going to be top five, I would say yes. For any individual running back, the odds are low. Christian McCaffrey, though, is not your average 26-year-old running back. I think that's obvious. He's arguably the best fantasy running back of all time. He's one of the most productive fantasy players at any position we've ever seen, but we already know that. That's baked into his cost. He's not being treated like a normal 26-year-old running back. He's being drafted as the RB5 and in the first round of Dynasty Startups. The other thing that makes him not an average 26-year-old running back is that A, he's undersized, and B, he's missed 70% of his team's games in the last two years with like a litany of injuries, two of which have been ankle injuries. And so he's an undersized guy who's proven to be fairly fragile in the last couple years. And now he's over the age apex. That's the reason he's available at the 112. If he was consistently posting like number one overall fantasy seasons and he hadn't gotten hurt and he was 26 right now, he's probably not available at the 112. He'd be an older guy, but he'd be, a, you know, you'd have to take him at like the, the 101, the 103, like something up there. The injuries and the age are the reason he's available at the 112. But if you take him there as your first player, your most important important player in a dynasty startup that necessitates a go for broke approach for your dynasty team which is not inherently bad but you need to have information in order for that to be a reasonable decision for just a couple examples if you take james connor over chris olave in the sixth round of a dynasty startup or if you take michael thomas over rashad bateman in the seventh round of a dynasty startup or if you take rashad penny over rashad white in the ninth round of a dynasty startup you're voluntarily opting for like go for broke win now gotta get it done in 2022 type production versus you know looking towards the future going for youth you know you might be giving up some future value in exchange for theoretical production in this season that's going to help you over the other option and so that's, you know, that's a decision you can make in the 6th, 7th, or ninth round, given that you have information about your team and about the rest of the league that you gained based on what happened in the draft for the first 5, 6, 7, 8 rounds. You know, you're making an informed decision at that point. If you're opting for a win-now asset at the 112, you're making a completely uninformed decision about what the rest of the league is going to look like, about what your roster is going to look like, and it backs you into a corner where you have to build a win-now roster. Christian McCaffrey does not fit on a rebuilding roster. He does not fit on a middle-of-the-road roster. Christian McCaffrey fits on a contending elite roster that has a chance to win right now. And if Christian McCaffrey's on your team and you don't win in year one, you're then relying on 27-year-old Christian McCaffrey in year two. If you don't win that season, you're then relying on 28-year-old Christian McCaffrey in year three. And then if you're playing a value game, there's virtually zero chance that he's more valuable in 12 months or 24 months or 36 months than he is right now. If you're taking Christian McCaffrey 
you're banking on him being A, healthy, and B, productive to the level of a top five running back as a 26-year-old guy who's undersized and has been hurt for the vast majority of the last two seasons. I think taking Christian McCaffrey and banking on him as the most important player on your team makes a lot of sense in redraft this year because there are no options other than win-now mode in redraft. Everybody's in win-now mode in redraft. You can't opt for youth and future value over immediate production in redraft. Christian McCaffrey makes a lot of sense in that format. It also makes a lot of sense to trade for Christian McCaffrey in an existing dynasty league where you already know you're in win now mode. If it's year four of a dynasty league and my team has Josh Allen and Jonathan Taylor and Cooper Cup and Travis Kelsey and I've got the 103 in the rookie draft, I'm probably going to end up with Kenneth Walker and I've got these, you know, other, I've got trade ammunition Going for a guy like Christian McCaffrey to, like, put me over the top and, you know, kind of put me over these other, you know, powerhouse teams in my league, that makes a lot of sense. I'm at a point where I can make the decision, like, my team is good enough to win a championship. Let me, like, increase my odds that that happens by going for broke and trading for a potentially elite producer who carries some risk, like Christian McCaffrey. You're able to make an informed decision given that you can like see the landscape of the rest of the league, you know what's on your roster, but if you're in a startup, you don't have that information. You're at the 112, there are zero players on your roster unless you've been like making trades and you already have some guy you took at the 108 or whatever. But generally, if you're sitting there at the 112 and you take Christian McCaffrey, you're essentially betting that the rest of your startup draft is going to be better than everybody else's. Because if you don't win a championship, if you don't field the number one team in your league and win a championship in year one, you wasted your first round pick. That's hard to say of any other pick in the first round right now. If you take Jonathan Taylor at the 101 and you don't win in year one, he's still going to have just as good a a chance of being elite next year as he did this year. That's not true for a 26-year-old running back coming off two straight injury-riddled seasons. You can't take Christian McCaffrey at the 112 in startups, trade for him in existing leagues, take him, you know, in the first couple picks in redraft, but in startups, allow yourself to make informed decisions, allow value to come to you, and and decide if you're going to go for broke once you're already five, six, seven rounds deep and you can see that your roster is in win now mode relative to the rest of the league. But at the 112, with no information available to you, do not take Christian McCaffrey in Dynasty Startups.